right, here's the deal. Nanlite sent me a whole bunch of gear and I'm gonna review all of it in just a few minutes. Now, quick ethics statement. Nanlite sent me all this stuff, but they don't have any control over what I'm gonna say about these lights. And there are good and bad things. So if you've watched this channel before, you might already know that I love aperture lights. I was skeptical about using a lower price brand, but at this point we've brought them on a bunch of commercial shoots, pushed them pretty hard, and have a pretty clear understanding about how they perform. But this video is sponsored. It's sponsored by Squarespace, and so you should use offer code Tyler Stallman next time you sign up, and you're gonna find out more about them later. Let's start over here. Going back to 1992, there's a company called Nan Guang making this great product called Pavo Tubes. Fast forward a little bit to 2019, and they partnered with some international distributors and created Nanlite, which is what we're looking at now. These are the Nanlite Pavo tubes. They come in a few different sizes. So back here, we've got four foot, and these are the two foots, and they are really fun. They're basically the de facto RGBW tubes that I think has been the gold standard for the entry level for a while. They have about two hours runtime on their internal batteries. Then you can also use things like D-Tap to run them much longer. They also daisy chain so you can keep them all in sync between their RGB colors. There's a lot they can do, especially for the price point. Let's take a look at the controls and the usability of these things. I really like the knobs that are on the top. So uh, one of them controls the brightness. The other one controls the white balance. Um, or if you're in full spectrum mode, it controls all the RGB colors. But let's spin it around, take a look at what that is. So um, there is a little screen here and a bunch of buttons. This is the part I don't like. It is often quite frustrating. So for example, I'm gonna switch over to CCT mode. And now as I start to move through things, it will um, just kind of reset itself a little randomly. Like it, it's kind of buggy almost. And that drives me crazy. You can still get to the colors that you want, or you can quickly jump into full rainbow mode. So you see on my hand, that's what we were doing to get that uh, full display of all the different colors. So you can totally manage this menu, but it's not great. But there's one place I actually think they got the controls right. There's also these six inch models that are much smaller, still surprisingly bright. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend throwing a few of these in your bag because you can just use them for a million different things. With these Pavo tubes, the worst thing about them is that the white point is kind of far off, depending on what you're mixing it with. Like for example, real daylight, they do end up being magenta and you can correct for it most easily on these smaller ones. It's much harder to correct the green into the larger, the four or the two foot tubes. But you know, it, it depends on what you're using them with. On their own, they look fine. It's just when you mix them. My favorite thing about these lights they are incredibly versatile, especially for the price. So for example, let's take the Hollywood favorites, Astera Titan tubes. They're used all over the place. They cost about a thousand bucks per tube, four feet long, very useful, they're great. But four foot long Nanlite Pavo tubes are a thousand bucks for a pack of four. I mean, that's a pretty good deal for lights that do effectively the same thing in a lot of situations depending on exactly what you need. The biggest difference is both that white point and also that these can't do the running RGB. So like each individual RGB light can't be completely different for programming, but you can have the whole thing be a different color. So a few features you miss out on, but for a quarter of the price. There's also some pretty great accessories. This one has really come in handy, especially on a recent shoot we were doing where it can massively control the light. So it's got both barn doors and you can also add a grid to the inside. So what that's doing, like if I hold it like this, you can see it's just like a sliver of light so that it can really focus down on your subject. This is awesome for putting over top in a room that you still want to feel dark. Pavo tubes are pretty great, but this next one, this next one's even more exciting. At $1,300, the Forza 500, which is 500 watts, is probably about the best value you can get in terms of power output for your dollar. It's a very clean light, 98 CRI, 95 TLCI, just reliably bright light. It's also got this very lightweight head. Like this is pretty small for what it's doing. And they put a lot of the size down into the bigger ballast slash control box. It's also got just two cables, which I appreciate. In the old days, there used to be three for this kind of thing, which was really annoying. And you know what? I think a lot of people don't really realize why they might need 500 watts. Let's, uh, this is at 1% right now, let's just, Turn this all the way, you can't tell how bright that is. I know how these things work. But trust me, it's really, really bright. 500 watts is a lot and that's very useful. It does things like being able to light a larger room or be able to have a larger, softer source. There's so many uses for bright light. 
that you may not even realize until you've got one. In terms of controls, they are very simple, which is just the way I like it. We got a big fat uh, power knob and also a bunch of menu stuff that uh, is controlled by this one. So for example, one thing I like is you can actually turn the screen all the way off if you need it to be completely silent, which does reduce your total power. Um, so typically I am keeping the fan on. It also has a series of effects that I don't really care about or use, which is why I'm not talking about them, even though a lot of other reviews do talk about the effects more. So uh, you can find out about them there. The worst, I don't have much to say. I really do like this light a lot. Uh, I don't love that you need two hands to unlock both sides of it. Uh, it's kind of inconvenient, I guess. Um, other than that, I really like this light. Uh, I could use more power, but there are more powerful lights out there too. I mean, it's a little bit less than the Aperture 600, for example, to give you a point of reference. Uh, and it is a little hard to really fight the sun with it. Uh, I tried, I thought I could. I do recommend if you're looking for accessories, get the um, Fresnel attachments with the barn doors. We've got one over there and we've been using them full time with that. Almost every single time we set these up, we have had the Fresnels on it because it just focuses the light in a very useful way that um, becomes very practical. And these are super well made. So I love these lights. We've been putting them to a lot of use, um, but let's go on to another light I really love. This little guy was a very happy surprise for me. Uh, this is the Forza 60B and I didn't expect it to do that much, right? I'm like, okay, great, little compact light. Maybe this could be a hair light sometimes. This is actually really surprisingly powerful for its size. Like it kind of reminds me of what a 120D from Aperture can put out. It is really, really bright and really, really small. It can also run off of batteries. You can get accessories to mount it on either a V-Lock or you can put your little Sony batteries on there. It does so much in this tiny little thing and it's bicolor. Looking at the back, it seems like the interface is gonna be really simple, right? We've only got two dials. It's unnecessarily complicated. So this one is the power as you might expect. And this one, just starts going through random <laughs> effects that I never really want to use. Um, so let me try to get all the, I mean, honestly, every time you use, there we go. Okay, effects are off, which is good. That's all I ever wanted. And I have to press this one to switch over to my white balance where I can change the Kelvin temperature that this is coming out at. Then I press it again and go back and forth. So anytime I ask somebody to change something on this light that's not familiar with it, they get it wrong and some crazy flashing starts to happen. So I do not like the controls on this one. Now I also love this for the accessories you can get. This here is the spotlight and um, I didn't know I needed a spotlight until recently. Uh, you should know though, if you're gonna try to mount normal Bowen stuff, you need an adapter because the light is smaller than a Bowen's mount, like you couldn't fit one on there. Anyway, this spotlight is awesome here. Let's turn it around over here, turn it on. Um, the reason that this is so useful is not exactly to, you know, pretend you're on a stage. So if I open it up like this, you get a perfect circle. That's not what I use it for. What I like is to be able to add these little slashes and you can kind of cut in until you either have a square. So you make like a perfect picture frame or if you widen it, you can make it look like slashes of light are coming in through a window. This really can sell a scene as being more realistic than just having everything exposed perfectly. You can also add different cutout filters to add shapes in the background. So you can either have like trees or a window shade or whatever you want. You could even cut out your own if you feel like it. It's so much more than I expected for its relatively small size and affordable price. The 60B is a must have in my books. Next, we are gonna talk about these bad boys, the Mix Panel 150 and they are extremely versatile lights. But first, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. And I'm sure by now you already know that Squarespace is the best place on the internet to build a home for yourself, a web page where people can find you and your work. Whether you're a filmmaker or photographer, it's a perfect place to showcase your beautiful images. Their easy to customize templates allow your photos to shine on desktops and mobile, everywhere, and you don't have to do any extra work for that. They handle all of it. There's a lot of cool automated stuff in the background, like they also have member areas so that you can expand your business to giving custom content to the people that love your work the most. There's also all the detailed analytics that you wanna see and automatic SEO so you don't have to think about making sure your site is found in search results. There are so many other great features and you should head over to Squarespace right now to check them out. In just a few minutes, you're gonna be able to put up a little simple website. It really is that quick. And once you're ready to launch it, you're gonna to go to squarespace.com slash Tyler Solomon 
and enter promo code Tyler Salmon to get 10% off your first website or domain. I just realized that was very presumptuous saying you're going to do that. I just, I hope you do. I mean, it lets them know that you saw this video and I appreciate you guys for heading over there and Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So Mixpanel 150, this is a RGBWW light that is pretty compact and very, very bright and it costs $1,100. So you can completely either fill a room with color or this could be your key light. They can do a lot and might be a good first light for a lot of people. They also have this crazy feature. So if I find the button on the back, you can switch between hard and soft mode. So this is hard and this is soft. There's a lot more output in, so uh, in hard mode and then in soft mode, it diffuses the whole front of it using magic or science. I, I, I don't know which one it is really. Let's spin this around, take a look at the back. These are the best menus, in my opinion, on any of the NAND lights. I think they nailed it on the mix panels. The knobs feel really good. It's weird that they feel different on anything because like you'd think they'd all be the same, but it is a little different. There's a lot of buttons here. I'm not gonna walk you through the whole menu system, but you know, if I press HSI, you'll get a little taste of what the different colors could be. There's also effects modes, which uh, you know we've used this rainbow version a few different times uh, in various YouTube videos you might've seen. So there are a lot of things you can do. This is how you switch back and forth between hard and soft. You can also completely turn the fans off and go into silent mode, and you can operate in a battery mode. So if I turn everything off here, and I take one of Nanlite's 26 volt, which is very important to notice which one it is, and pop it in, turn on the light, which does take a little bit of a second, but now all of a sudden I have a fully mobile light that can be insanely bright and go anywhere. I really love being able to use this battery. The worst part about these lights is, well, even though their CRI is 98 and their TLCI is 95, when all that means that it's gonna have very accurate color rendition, the white balance, it's shifted towards magenta. Like there is a strong tint to it. You can try to offset that using the RGB lights inside, add a bit of green, but it's not totally accurate and you still end up with weird color casts sometimes. The best part is that you can get a ton out of this relatively small lightweight unit. It does so much. And that's why I say this could be a good first light for a lot of different people. The only time you might have trouble is if you're mixing it with other lights, that magenta can become a problem. But if you just have these, they can look great. Now, there is one more light that I've been saving until the end, and it's a big one. I mean, like, it's, it's a really big one. It's actually not a light, so this is a softbox. This is the 150 parabolic softbox, and it is enormous. I don't know if you can even tell, but we have a studio and it barely fits in here. Um, just be aware, yes, this is gonna soften your light a lot. It's very, very soft light, but you do need a big space. A lot of people may not even be able to fit this into their home. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope some of it was helpful. And I do have some more videos that will teach you how to use lights like this. Cinematic lighting is much easier than you think. Thanks for watching, guys.